want to continue from where we left off last week, Romans chapter, Romans chapter 38, and uh, a very powerful uh, portion of scripture that I love so much. And Paul is talking about the most grievous uh, times in our lives. And he draws up some scenarios and he draws up some 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 circumstances and attack that we often face and then he in his conclusion he asks us the question. And the question is who shall? In fact King James says what shall? And uh and and I prefer uh the NIV who says who because it is not a what that is attacking us. It is not some dead inanimate thing. It is not some non-existent force um, that is um, immobile and inactive. There is a spirit and a force behind all that comes against us. A child of God, you have to know who your enemy is. And so Paul asked the question. And he asked the question to the ancient uh, Jews and the, the ancient uh, Gentiles. And that is, since you've been walking with God and since you claim to be a servant of the living God, then what shall, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And he goes, shall trouble or hardships or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? He says, as it is written, notice here, as it is written for your, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And now he's going to intercept. He's going to correct that misnomer because he goes on to say, no, in all these things, brothers and sisters, we say it with a declarative conviction. We are more than conquerors through him who love us. And Father, we thank you for your word tonight and pray that you will bless it for these few moments that we will sit here at your table and we come as empty vessels wanting to be filled by you. We, de- we, we, we say to you, we admit that we are devoid of the, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding and how to walk and how to face our challenges and even the strength of how to fight and how to succeed against our adversaries. We ask you that you may be wisdom in my mouth and we pray God that you will be understanding and that you will, the eyes of your people will be illuminated as we share together tonight. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are our teacher and we are under your tutelage, so we ask you that you will build us up in the most holy faith. Uh, We are, brothers and sisters, Paul points out that we are more than conquerors. I guess we're not really talking about invincibility because only God is invincible. Only God is indispensable. Only God uh, that cannot experience uh, any failures regardless of what encounters or challenges that there be. For God, there is no challenge, but for the believer, there will constantly be times of testings and challenges that will push us up in the corner and push us up against the wall and there finding no strength at all, you're going to have to learn to lean upon the Lord. Somebody right there right now, you know exactly what it is I'm talking about, what I'm referring to. So last week we started out very quickly, if you give me three minutes, two minutes on that, and we talked about the chicken mentality and that God will have to mature us out of this trap. Uh This is a mouse trap. Uh, For you to have wings and not know why you were given wings like a chicken that doesn't know it was given wings to fly. To be equipped, to be empowered uh, with with the, the equipment that is necessary to take you far, to cause you to grow, to fly high and not be cognizant of that, but to be ignorant to your own strength, to be ignorant to your own ability, to be ignorant to your own self-image, your own uh, uh, your own giftings, 
I believe it is the most damnable, one of the most damnable things uh, to our own personal future. And so we have to ask God to open our eyes, illuminate our eyes, that we may see all that he has placed inside of us and what we're able to do. Don't settle for being a chicken when you have been given the eagle, uh, wings, but like the eagle, mount up and fly and look to the hills. From whence come at your head, pick your head up out of the sand like an ostrich, and um, and determine that greater is He that is in me than is He that is in the world. Very quickly, once again, I mentioned last week one of the points was that your confession is a vivid expression of your self perception. Who are you? Don't you dare sit around here and allow anybody to define who you are. Uh, nobody can come up to me to tell me what's my name. I know what is my name. My mama gave me a name when I was young, and um, my daddy gave me my last name. And from a child, they riveted that inside of me that my name is Courtney Q. Williams. I'm that Courtney uh, from the definition that I've been told and I've read means to abide in the temple. Somehow my name carries the secret of my future and my destiny. That name means to abide in the temple. It meant that I was called by God even from the womb to be doing what I'm doing right now. And he that abides in the, in, the, in the secret place of the Most High, my God have mercy. That's what I was called to do. And you abide in that secret place. And uh, you've got God's direction uh, in the future. Uh, being called to be a preacher then exposes me not only uh, to the dangers that there be, but expose me to the unparalleled strength and greatness of God that is there to sustain me in the midst of my hardship. You've got to be careful how you see yourself and what you call yourself and how you identify yourself. Your confession uh, is a vivid expression of your self-perception. How do you perceive yourself? Like the way that others, others, what others say, others' definition of you, others' uh, false analysis of who you are. Do you define yourself by your weaknesses and by your failures and by your habits and by the things that sometimes cause you shame and pain? And for some, even reproach. No, I'm not defined by those things. Those are not the distinguishing um, um, uh, factors in my life. My life is defined by, what, by who God says that I am. And the minute you come to that realization, honey, you'll be able to step over every hurdle and those stumbling blocks that are, that, that are before you. And I come to tell you that regardless of what it is that was in my future, in my past, that when Jesus Christ cr climbed that old rugged cross and pinned my sins and all of my conditions, my weaknesses, my habits upon that cross, I want you to know that I became a new man, and so are you. Be careful what you think and how you see yourself and how you, you perceive who you are. Hallelujah to God. Those that have a, a, a strong self-confidence, those that understand who they are in the Lord, they are bold and, and they have this assurance. They have this positivity uh, uh, about them, this, this, um, this assuredness, hallelujah to God, about them, which raises faith and confidence in their lives. But on the contrary, people with low self-image, low self-esteem is mastered by fear. Mastered by intimidation. They are mastered by trepidation. They are mastered by, uh, you know, indecisiveness and uh, anxiety. But I ask you today to put off. And as you gather more, child of God, to the altar, as you build a closer relationship with God, the struggles and the challenges of life uh, become smaller in your sight. You magnify the strength of your enemy. You magnify the opposing force. You magnify your opponent when you walk before them in fear and tremble and, 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 and quiver. Here it is. Then, uh, if you would, child of God, turn with me to 
just as I was coming on here, the Spirit of God spoke to me. He said, uh, talk to them about Numbers chapter 13 and verse 27 to 33. Numbers chapter 13, let's look at verse 27 to 33. You know the back backdrop of that. It is the children of Israel who had been walking around in the wilderness for far too long. The children of Israel who had been living in inferiority. The children of, of Israel who had been living below their privilege. Well, it became a victim of circumstances. And instead of them taking a few days to cross over into the promised land, although they had been delivered, I want you to see this, although they had been delivered out of Egypt, you have to understand that Canaan was not just their destination. Canaan was their, uh, yes, it was their destiny. Canaan was the promised land. It was God's uh, optimal uh, gift for their lives. It was God's richest inheritance handed over to them. And all they had to do is walk in faith and follow God. And though they had been delivered from Egyptian bondage, yet still they find themselves somehow uh, roaming around in the wilderness, in a dry place, in a desolate place, in an infertile place, in an unirrigated place, living below their standards because of fear, murmuring and grumbling and complaining about the conditions of life that they lost sight, that they were that close, steps away from going into their heritage. Now it became apparent to Moses that, listen here, we're wasting time. So what we're going to do, we know where, where the land of Canaan is. He sent in spies, 12 men that were ordered to go in to check out the land, spy out the land. Notice that in as much as one would call this prudence, this was, an, uh, this was a fearless attempt by Moses. Because when God tells you something, you really don't need any other assurance. Sometimes we are where we are because we're constantly trying to get God to reaffirm what he's already said it, what he's already said. Listen to me. When God says it, the first time it is confirmed. It doesn't need to be tested. It doesn't need to be tried. And it does not need a second opinion. Most of the times it's when we seek for a second opinion on, on the decisions of God that we find ourselves in trouble. Well, this was a second opinion because them boys now, Moses should have, uh, what they should have done is to strap their faith on and put, gird their loins and march on in knowing that God was going to be the one to uh, uh, take, uh, take over and God was going to be the one to fight their battles. So the Bible lets us know that um, these 12 men went in and they went in and when they went, now they're going to give Moses, uh, they came back with the account. They came back with the report. They gave Moses this account. They said, we went into the land which, is, which you sent us in, and it does flow with milk and honey. Well, number one, confirmation. What God said he was going to do, he's going to give them such a uh, unique land, and such a peculiar uh, spot of landscape. He said it would be flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey was figurative of prosperity and riches, that which would be uh, able to supply this 2 point something million people without struggle. Struggle would end in the land of Canaan, but because of doubt kept them trapped in the wilderness. I want you to know that 2 million of them eventually died. But here it is at this conjecture. Uh, here is. Uh, it's fruits. They said it's filled with milk and honey, and they brought back the fruits. They brought back the grapes. I mean grapes, gigantic, giant-sized grapes, man. I mean everything in Canaan was big. I mean, you will find out in a little while. God is bringing you to big. I feel like God is telling me to talk to somebody. These grapes were bigger than anything that they have ever seen. The land was big. It was large, and everything thing in Canaan was done in a big way. So they brought back the evidence. Exhibit A. Here it is. We brought back the fruits. Watch this now, verse 28. But the people who live there are powerful. Oh, God. Oh, God. The, the people that are there are powerful. Notice. 
they're giving more credit to the people that they saw, uh, and now they have become blinded by the image of those people. They have become blinded to their own self-image. There are people that will... I mean, you're always crediting somebody. You're always congratulating somebody. You're always complimenting folks. You're always admiring those, and you lift them to a pedestal. And by lifting people to a pedestal, and ain't nothing wrong with that to be complimentary, but but you lift them to such a high uh, plateau, plateau until you can't see your own self. You cannot see your own self for raising people higher than you. He said, these people uh, that live there, they're very powerful, and the cities are fortified and very large. Metropolitan area, my God, you see, everything mm-hmm. in Canaan was big. <laughs> uh, you, better, you better tell yourself God is bringing you to big. And the truth of the matter is that some of us, uh, we are immune. Some, not, not immune, but some of us, we, 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 just, we can't handle big. We cannot see ourselves in a better place than where we are now. And until you can see yourself in the place of your adversaries and your opposition, until you can see yourself, as the Bible tells us, being the head and not the tail, baby, you will never have it. If you think that you can never own a big house, you will never live in it until Jesus comes. You've got to have the confidence, hallelujah, to God that God said it. And God said go out and get a house. Then don't get a house that is that is just um you know, just a, just 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 a, just a one bedroom and everybody just closed up in it and, and this is what I earn and this is what I can afford. Oh Shamandebe. Sometimes you gotta step out by faith and know that what God wants you to have is God wants you to have more than just this. Hallelujah. And so, so they said this, notice, they said, we even saw descendants of Anak there. Watch this now. We saw the descendants of Anak. The, the Amalekites live in the Negev. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the, uh, the Ammonites uh, live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea and among the Jordan. Notice here. The land that they were given was the land of the Canaanites, the land of Canaan. And within it, the Bible says that the Canaanites, uh, they lived, watch this, near the sea. Hey, Shaman David. And uh, they live in the, in the uh, sea coast, you know, and uh, near the waters, you know, the beaches, the beautiful beaches. And, and they not only lived there, but they lived along the Jordan. They lived along the Jordan. I've, I've been to Jordan. I mean, a very, very fertile place. Mountainous, yes, surrounded, but a very, very fertile place. The Dead Sea is the lowest point down there. you got to pass Jordan and you go down to the Dead Sea. And, oh, my God, all kinds of healing uh, 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 elements that is in the Dead Sea water. I mean, you you literally cannot drown in there uh, unless you flip over on your face and and somehow you just you just can't swim, you just can't turn over. But you walk into the Dead Sea and um, and it got so much mineral in there that as you step in there uh, knee deep or high enough so you can float, you just lay out on your back and whether you can swim or not, you just lay out on your back and my God, you are floated. God was bringing them to a rich, irrigated, fertile land. Hallelujah to God. But here comes the butts. Hallelujah. You got to get the butts out of your future. You got to get the butts out of what God is trying to do to you, uh, do for you. So they brought this negative report. Then the Bible says uh, uh, two of them intercepted. Caleb silenced the people before Moses and said, we should go up and take possession of the land for we can certainly do it. Saints of God, this man had the confidence that comes from God. Regardless of the challenges that he faced or we were facing, 
as a people. No military might, no army whatsoever. We've got no weaponry. We are a new nation, my God in heaven, that just escaped. We are refugees, but we've got the God of heaven and earth beside us, around us, and behind us. And so he said, now look here, despite the opposition, We can do it because God said it. I want to tell somebody that despite the opposition, that despite the objections, the obvious objections, some of you, some of you have things today, some of you have acquired things today, that if you had listened to the negative whisper of the enemy in your head, if you had listened to all the multitudes that were telling you that it was not possible, you'd have never attempted to do it. And though you had seen you experience severe troubles and struggles trying to obtain, you overcame and you are victorious today and life is better for you. And there are some of you that are in the middle, hallelujah, in the middle of going through right now. But honey, uh, keep your eyes on the prize for the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, because after this, hallelujah, it will be worth your while. Say, Caleb, we need a Caleb in our lives to tell the negative paralysis uh, paralogists uh, 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 in our lives, uh, parapsychologists, hallelujah, in our lives to shut up. You say that now and then when you hear that negative voice in your in your head, tell the devil, shut up in the name of Jesus. I can do all things because of who lives in me. Now, so Caleb shut him up and told Moses, he said, now listen, we can do this. But the men who had gone up with him, now they step in. You have to understand that the the thing that impedes progress uh, in the church and in whether it be in government or in business is usually those men of authority that have this negative outlook on life. Sad about everything. Everything is always too big. Everything is always too much. It's not possible. Always looking for some kind of a pitfalls, always looking forward for something to go bad. God told Israel, I'll go before you. If God is going before us, let's march along. Even if it is in, in the dark, blindfold, let's march along. He is our light. He said, these men jumped up and objection, Moses. Watch all of these that are objecting vision and objecting this and objecting that. If you've got a wife that is always objecting your vision, this marriage will go nowhere. The family will live uh, with the meager marshes of life and never experience uh, the reservoir of milk and honey that is reserved for us. Hallelujah to God. I'm telling you, sometimes you just got to see the obstructions. And you just got to face it with boldness and tenacity and believe that God is going to do it. We can't attack these people. They are stronger than we are. They said that they are powerful. They said that they are large. They said that they are uh, uh, stronger than they are. They said that the city is fortified. And they spread among the Israelites. What's this? They, they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. Bad report, negative report. But the Bible says, whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. They said, the land we explored devours those living in it. All the people we saw there, watch this, all the people we saw there are of great size. Everything in Canaan was big. Oh God, I'm getting a I'm getting a blessing out of this. God is taking us to a to something big. God is taking us to big dreams and big visions and big attainments and oh God and big acquisitions and big victories. Shandala mashondolo kusabra. Somebody shout right where you are. It's gonna be big. Yeah, they said that they were great size. We we saw, here's what they said, we saw the Nephilims uh, there. Those are the descendants of Anak come from the Nephilims. And I can't even get into the Nephilims to tell you uh, how 
and theologians that, that how they describe them. That's another day. He says, we seem, but here it is, we seem like grasshoppers in our own sight. And we looked the same way to them. Listen to me, how you see yourself is exactly how folks are going to see you. If you see yourself as being inferior, inferior to your enemies, you will be. If you see yourself as being weak, you will be conquered. You will be crushed. You will be stepped on. If you see yourself as nothing much, people will take advantage of you. If you see yourself as being slow and not fast enough, people will outrun you. They will overtake you. They will exceed you. Come on, Shandaba. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you need an optical adjustment. You need a modification in the of your vision, how you are looking at yourself. You need to look at yourself again. Look at yourself through the word of God. Not look at yourself through the physical lens, but look at yourself through the realms of faith. Declaring and knowing that I can do all things through the Christ that strengthens me. He says, man, what we up against here, they are giants and we look like grasshoppers in our own eyes. In the Lacastera Riendebe. They were de- reducing themselves, de- reducing themselves to grasshoppers. You know what grasshoppers does or uh, do all day? They sit around and they eat and spit. Spit and eat. Eat and spit. Spit and eat. And they saw themselves, the people of God who had been redeemed by God, the people of God who defeated and stressed out uh, the, the, the world power at that time, stressed out Pharaoh, who called himself a god, and watched God drown Pharaoh, and they had incredible victory that they forgot the uh, drowning thunderous sound of of jubilation. When they came out with Miriam leading the praise team, they forgot their strength. And never you forget the enemy that you crush behind you. Uh, because if you're not careful, hallelujah to God, the descendants of Anak will rise up again. And when they rise up, they will rise up stronger and bigger. Um, but the, but the, the, the bigger they are, hallelujah to God, the easier it makes it for you not to miss. Hallelujah to God. The easier it is for you to crush them down because of the strength of God that is inside your life. I want to tell somebody, you need to reevaluate and you need to look at yourself again from God's perspective. Here it is now. Uh, Let's look at, uh, we need to get rid of this um, grasshopper mentality because Paul says, we are more than conqueror. We are more than conqueror. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul lets us know that we are more than conquerors, and it's through him that love us. I want to especially draw your attention to the phrase, more than conqueror. Write it down, the phrase, more than conqueror. Last week I gave it to you. We might have some new folk on, and I want to give you these two Greek words, uh, and, um, and we'll, we'll lock it down for the night comes from this this phrase more than conqueror comes from the Greek word brothers and sisters and it's Hooper Nichols. It is H U P E and N I K O S. Hooper Nichols is a compounded word uh of uh, Hooper and Nichols. So it's two words. But join the words Hooper and Nichols are together into one word Paul is um Paul is making one fabulous jam packed power field statement about you and me. I don't care where you came from. I don't care what kind of hole in the world that uh our leader says that we come from. 
I don't care whether you had education or you had uh, 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 whatever you, you, don't, you have or don't have. I don't care what the color of your skin is. And I don't even care if nobody in your family ever succeeded. You are no longer now operating under the spirit of your, uh, of your generational family. Hallelujah to God. Lineage. You are, when you come in Christ, you are a new creature. And you're operating under the strength and the power. You have become a part of the family of God. A member of the family of God. It means then that, that, uh, that uh, the DNA that was in Jesus Christ, which is in the Father, is now in you. That's the new DNA that you have on the inside. So you're operating not according to the laws of the flesh, but according to the laws of the Spirit. I want you to see that. I want you to begin to tell yourself that you have been redeemed to succeed. You have been redeemed, hallelujah to God, when Jesus climbed the cross, he redeemed your victory, it, he redeemed your deliverance, and all of your inheritance is now ready for the taking. Hallelujah. The words more than, more than, are derived from the Greek word hooper, as I said before, which literally means over, watch this, over, above, beyond. It depicts something that is way beyond measure. <laughs> uh, in other words, you have unlimited power that is available to you, and you've got to be able to access it through prayer and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It carries the idea of superiority. Hallelujah to God. It is, it is over and above something uh, that is better than anything that you can ever face, any challenge that you can ever face. Something that is uttermost, paramount. Uh, I can't think of any more foremost. How about uh, something that is first rate, first class, and top notch. Something that is greater, higher, and better. Something that was well, something that is unrivaled by any person or thing. What an incredible description of who we are in Christ Jesus. Well, I'm telling you the truth that the minute that you grab a hold of that, your life begins to change completely. There were those when I was growing up that would like to uh, somehow, uh, if I'd listened to their lies, I would be confined to being a janitor. And while there's nothing wrong with being a janitor because somebody must be it, that's not my portion. You've got to begin to stop taking the low line and stop taking the, the, the low line positions. And instead of applying for something that is significant and some kind of a position that will not only raise your status, but put you and your family in a better position and to live a better meaningful life with above struggles, you are constantly going for the low limb. Honey, sometimes the sweeter the fruit, man, the higher they are. And you've got to reach a little higher. Hallelujah. I remember growing up in the country, and i got to tell you the truth. Growing up in the country, man, I mean... Everything was rationed and scarce down in the country, even, I mean, cool, fresh water. There is something about coconut water that is not just refreshing. Oh, my God. You, you, you're not going to suffer from dehydration if you got some coconut water around. It'll hydrate your body. Even right now, uh, sometimes when, when I preach, I, I like to have some coconut water because the coconut water, it not just refreshes me, but it hydrates my body. And what it does, it gives me more fuel to go longer and stronger. Mm -hmm. But I found out something about them coconuts, and most of them, they are high up, way up, up top. And somebody's got to be bold enough to climb their way up there. And sometimes in climbing all the way up there, you there is always a, a risk. There is always the prospect of falling back down. Uh, it, it, there's always the danger of breaking something, injuring something, ruining something. But you can't focus there. You can't put up your stakes there. Always living by fear. 
Some of you were created to be millionaires. Some of you were created to own businesses and, and to be running Fortune 500 companies. Some of you, some of you, you said, oh, I'm, I'm an RN. I'm an RN now, and I'm, I'm making $35 an hour, $40 an hour, whatever you were. When you ought to be making $65 an hour, $75 an hour, why stop there? You ought to raise the stake on yourself, hallelujah to God. You ought to raise it up higher. You ought to look higher. Raise, your, raise, it, raise it a little bit higher. And some, you don't want to leave this earth never having accomplished anything uh, substantial. You don't want to leave this earth betraying, betraying your own abilities, betraying your own self, your own self-worth. Stop devaluing yourself by comparing yourself with other people. As long as I'm comparing myself with somebody else, you're going to be marginalized. You hear me? What you got to do, you got to maximize your potential. You got to push yourself uh, to the point where, my God, they tell me that they had at some times ago, they had Hussein Bolt running with horses. <laughs> you will never know your, your the measure of your strength, your stamina, your ability until you push yourself beyond the limits. I hear, I hear you watching the documentary and hear Usain Bolt talking about practicing for 12 hours in one day, days on end. Huh? You got to push yourself, baby. You got to push yourself. Why? Because you're a more than. And I want you to begin to repeat that to yourself right now. You're a more than. You're not just some kind of an average plebeian, some average poor, uh, 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 disenfranchised individual. You're not what. You're not what. You're not what. So what. What some political um, um, uh, pundits say that you are. No, 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 no. You are what God says that you are. I read somewhere uh, yesterday that uh, 50 million students in America, and that now they are being. Uh, homeschooled, and among the 50 million that are being homeschooled, they said 15 to 16 million children in America do not have uh, computers and some access to uh, Wi-Fi. And they said of that group of people that do not have um, uh, those uh, luxuries and amenities, that 37 percent of that group uh, African American minorities, but I want to tell you something that we can thrive and our children shall succeed and can succeed if we've got parents like my parents were, and if we've got parents like those of our uh, our forefathers that came over on the boats and were determined, not knowing the language, had to learn it, and it was illegal to send them to school. It was illegal for them to be educated. Hallelujah to God. There was a time when women, women in, 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 in America uh, was not, uh, uh, was not uh, exposed to education. Hallelujah to God. But somebody was determined, people like Frederick, Frederick Douglass, that some people were determined that no matter what happened, that they were going to learn. They were going to learn the language and not just uh, Ebonics. They were going to learn good English language. Some of you, some some people right now, some of us blacks, we we don't get the positions because we don't prepare ourselves for the position. We 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 live according to our own culture. And so I'm black and I talk a certain way. No no no. If you want to sit in certain chairs and if you want to sit in certain positions, then you've got to master it all. You don't have to lose yourself in the society that you're in, but you're going to have to know what your op opposition and opponent know, and you're going to have to be tw two times better than them. That's why women are excelling today in America and in society because um, they realize they got to be twice better. Than, uh, than a white man in this country in order to work the same thing that he works. So they push themselves. And with that kind of a resilience, they are increasing and they are advancing. I am in a type of a, a, a position where nobody is pushing me. There is no challenge to be better. 
If I choose not to study, nobody's going to come in and take me out of my job. Nobody's going to fire me. If I choose to speak for 15 minutes and and just talk it through, read the scripture, and just have some kind of a conversation, if I choose to sit on a chair and just take it easy and pick up my check uh, on, 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 a, on a Thursday, hey, it's up to me. But I got too much ambition. Uh, the, uh, the weight and the burden of my call and the desire to be better and the desire to operate, uh, to soar at a level uh, that is acceptable uh, to first to me than to others. So that which burns within my heart drives me to the foot of the cross. It drives me into prayer. I've been praying all day today. And from the time that I got up, Hallelujah to God. Almost until the time I got into Bible studies, I've been praying all day today. And I've been telling God how I'm below the standard. And I've been telling God how I don't know anything. Reveal something to me. you got to spend some time building up yourself in the most holy faith. Now Paul uses the same word to denote uh, what kind of a conqueror we are and uh, in Jesus Christ. And he says, we are Hupo conquerors. Hupa conquerors. You know, Hupa super conquerors. Paul uses this word Hupa to dramatize the victory, hallelujah, that we have in Christ. He says, we are not average. You better stop acting like it and stop thinking like it and, and stop talking about what, what you've been exposed to and who, who robbed what from you. Hallelujah to God. It is because of some of my some of my my worst uh, offenders and opponents and critics made me feel like absolutely nothing that gave me the adrenaline rush that gave me the propellant uh, to prove them wrong. Yes, you got something to prove. Stop being so spiritual and respiritualize everything. As if angels is coming down here to go take a test for you. No, 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 no. You have to be sometimes driven by your own desperation. If there is no situation that you are in, that you are permanently locked in, you got to break out of it. Even if it's sickness, you can break out of it. We can be healed. There is healing in the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you, Father, that you're going to make a way for me. Anybody that is in a constricting uh, situation and circumstance right now, feel like you will never escape, you'll never get out. I want you to lift your hands. I want you to open up your mouth, and I want you to tell yourself, I am a conqueror in Jesus Christ. And I'm not just a conqueror. Hallelujah to God. I am a more than. Oh, God, I did it. Look at what Paul says. <laughs> uh, we are great, greater conquerors. We are super conquerors. We are higher, better uh, uh, conquerors. We are more than a match for the foe and for the challenge and for the circumstance we face. We are uttermost conquerors, paramount, uh, uh, top notch. We are unsurpassed conquerors, unequal conquerors unrivaled uh, conquerors. Yes, that's what that's what he says. But we must continue to the next part of the verse as I close. Where Paul then says to us, I hope you're not uh, I hope you're not tired. I've not been going long. I'm just going to take just maybe about five more minutes. And what Paul says is, he says um, uh, he says uh, Paul calls us, he calls us he calls us conquerors. Conquerors, not just some of us. We were delivered. We were redeemed to win. We are in the winner's circle. We are on the winning team. The word conqueror is from the Greek word now nikos. Nikos. And nikos is uh, uh, the word describes an overcomer. We are nickels. We are overcomers. We are not defeated. Because I fell down doesn't mean that I am defeated. Uh, uh, to be uh, defeated is to be 
um, relegated to a permanent state. Anybody can trip up and fall. If you if you are fighting a battle, fighting in the war, every now and then you can get shot. But but it's it, but but what determines whether you win or lose is whether you determine to succumb. You determine to lay down and die. Baby, we're going to fight until the fight is over. That's where the victory comes. Hmm? Come on, come on. It's not over yet for you. And I'm here to tell you that no pandemic is going to stop what God intends. And I'm not going to lose my vision. And I'm not going to lose my expectation and my confidence in God because of pandemic. I don't care what stock market is falling. I have a financial advisor that tells me no matter how low you see this stock market fall, he says the idea is you got to be in it to win it, and you got to stay in it until you obtain it. Hallelujah to God, because it's down today, and you don't know what's coming tomorrow. Sometimes it's in a, it's in a, a, a downward spiral. Uh, downward spiral, and it happens for weeks, sometimes for, uh, sometimes even for months, until lo and behold, what was once uh, $200 or uh, $300 a share, next thing you know, it falls all the way down to 50, and within the space of a uh, matter of seconds the next day, it rises beyond uh, 40. Uh, listen, that's how life is. It's, it's volatile. It vacillates. It's a up and down, but baby, you got to stick in it. You're going to win it. Shout, I'm going to win it. It is the picture then, Nikos. It is the picture of an overcoming, uh, prevailing force. God, I feel you here. I know, an overwhelming, prevailing force. However, the word Nikos alone wasn't strong enough to make Paul's point. So he joined, he conjoined these two words together, Hooper Nichols, together to make this point even stronger. Hallelujah to God. When you, listen, when you put these two words together, they form the word Hooper Nichols, which declares that in Jesus Christ, you are not just a conqueror that wins occasionally. Hallelujah. And it's not just an occasional victory, hallelujah, that you win sometimes and you lose most of the time. The devil is a liar, hallelujah. You are an overwhelming conqueror. You are a paramount victor or the, uh, how do I say, an enormous overcomer. The word is so powerful, power packed that one could uh, somehow interpret it as a phenomenal walloping, conquering force. I'm telling you, if you just believe God, you'll surprise yourself every now and then. If you just believe God, hallelujah, and let God fight your battle, regardless of how you feel, lift up your head, child of God. It is physician, heal yourself. Some of you, the negative stinking thinking is the thing that's got me thinking. Hallelujah to God. What would happen to you if you would just lift up your head? <laughs> I feel like I need to say it again. I said, I look at some of you and the negative uh, stinking thinking that you've got over you is the thing that got me thinking. What in the world would happen to your life if you just get an optical uh, 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 modification of how you see yourself? Huh? That's precisely who you are in Christ Jesus. You are a phenomenal, you are, uh, uh, a conquering force. Hallelujah. So stop looking at yourself as a struggling loser. Some of you even tell yourself that. I don't care what happened to your mama or your daddy, your cousins, and all of them. I don't care who never came out to be nothing much in your district, in your community, in your class, whatever. No, you are a high-class citizen of the kingdom of God. Regardless of your past experience, you must begin to look uh, at yourself through God's eye. And in that light of Romans chapter 8 and 37, the verse declares that you are always the winner and never a loser. 
even if you experience some um, some bad encounter, uh, some uh, you know some uh, negative circumstances, some some disappointments, as we all do at times. And in the right, uh, in the light of Romans uh, chapter eight and verse thirty-seven, you've got to claim what belongs to you. This verse declares that you are always, uh, again, the winner and not the loser. And when you begin to see yourself the way God sees you, it is, it is, it will change the way others see you too. Israel said we look like grasshoppers and they look like giants. And well. Because of that, they ended up roaming in the wilderness for 40 years, sniffing sand. I mean, living below their privilege. May God cause you to rise up today in the strength and in the power of God. Resolve right now to see yourself the way the Word of God says that you are as a walloping, conquering force. You are more than match or any adversary any adversity or foe that would come against you today. Yes, if he wasn't careful, Gideon would have fallen prey to the Midianite army. Yes, he would uh, because uh, because of their size, because of their innumerable number. Gideon had, uh, I think it was something like 30... Uh, 27,000 or 33,000, whatever that it was, uh, 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 whatever that was. And God said, no, Gideon, you got too much. But you got too much. All you need is 300. God cut him down to 300. And then and then, if Gideon was focusing on size, he wouldn't have gone into battle. Fear would have overtaken him. You can't look at the size, and you can't look at status and statue. You got to see God. If you see God, God is always bigger than all of your problems, always bigger than all of your adversities, always bigger than all of your adversary. Yeah, let them them, uh, come up in multitudes and march against you. Some of you are facing that right now. I think about those of you in school that are being challenged by the educational system right now. I mean, uh, politically, uh, politics has taken over. Children are back in school at a time when they ought not to. But if children are not in school, then where will the teachers uh, how will they get paid? How will they take care of their families? And so you get this conundrum that is going on, and you are bombarded with fear. Nurses that are uh, traumatized right now, they say that the thing is coming back for round two, and they see the wind, uh, shifting winds changing, and they're seeing more cases, and they're terrified. You kidding me? No. We We are like Gideon. And we will defeat the Midianites. We will defeat pandemic. We will defeat corona. We will defeat every challenge that comes against us because our victory has already been won in Jesus Christ. I want you to bow your head with me, Father, in the name of Jesus.